All right, happy Thursday, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our monthly Squirrel webinar. In today's presentation, we will be discussing how to get the most out of online ordering with your Squirrel point of sale system. So my name is Megan Funk. I'm on the customer success team here at Squirrel Systems, and I will be one of your hosts today. Presenting today's webinar is Patrick Paris, a uh, sales and systems engineer. And today we also have Cyrus Sai, our senior product marketing manager, who will be joining me as co-host. In today's webinar, we hope to educate you on how to fully take advantage of online ordering. We hope you find this session informative and useful while we all navigate these challenging times to our industry. So before we kick things off today, there's just a few housekeeping items I need to go over. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled to last about 30 minutes with a Q&A session at the end. All attendees will be muted during the presentation. If you have a question at any time, please post in the questions tab and Cyrus will be addressing them at the end. This webinar will be recorded and published for viewing. We will share those details in a communication afterwards. At the end of the presentation, we will have a post webinar survey. We would really appreciate uh, if you could take the time to provide your thoughts and comments today. Okay, so today's webinar will be presented by Patrick Paris, one of our senior sales and systems engineers. Patrick has been with Squirrel for over 20 years and has worked with all manner of customers from large casino operations to multi-unit chains to single unit owner operators. His knowledge and expertise will be shown here today as he goes over the contents of this webinar. With that said, Patrick, I will pass the session over to you. Thanks, Megan. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Um, we're looking forward today. We get a lot of questions about online ordering, um, the different sections, what do they need to do, where do they need to start, and we thought that this was a, a good option for this week's webinar just to give people kind of a basic understanding of the things that they can do, need to do, uh, because online ordering is not one size fits all. There's a lot of different pieces for everybody, uh, different steps that you can take depending on where you are with your business and what you want to provide, okay? So the things that we get the most often is, you know, with online ordering, what is it? What needs to be involved? How far can I go? How far should I go? Um, so the things that we're, we're we're trying to ask and finding out is, you know, what is online ordering? Is it ordering um, on a web page? Um, is it a third party food delivery app? Is it some type of virtual or self service kiosk? Um, is it just a mobile app that I have access to? Or is it all of the above? The easy answer is E, all of the above. It can encompass all of these items. Um, or it can encompass certain parts of it, depending on where you are with your business and the service that you want to try to provide, okay? So online ordering, it certainly is more than a website, but ultimately that's where it starts. Um, we're looking at the website. What do you want to provide? Um, what's, what's your menu going to be? How are, the, how are you going to deliver it? Pieces like that. Um, also, is that web, that web page um, mobile enabled? Um, do you want to have a specific app that they can go to that's branded for your company, um, that's branded for your business, that gives you access to the different pieces? Is it a kiosk? And a kiosk can be a couple of different things. The kiosk can be a standalone unit that's out front of your business or inside um, that lets them order on their own. And there's some unique things that are going on there that we're going to touch on um, in a little bit. Um, and it also ties in with third-party delivery, things like Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash. Um, and again, you can pick and choose and use different pieces of this depending on which way you want to go. And that's where your point of sale is going to play a big part of this, of how it interacts, how it really helps you manage the overall process um, so that you can, again, spend your time taking care of your customers, delivering the uh, amazing guest experience you want to deliver, uh, both the ordering experience as well as the food delivery. Okay? So... There's some, there's some truths out there today. Um, some uh, had started prior to COVID. Some are, are continuing to churn because of where we are in our areas within the COVID scenarios. Um, and it talks about that, you know, online ordering, people wanting to get their food to go or have it delivered 
is kind of here to stay. Um, it's always been popular, but it has certainly risen greatly in popularity over the last um, 12 to 15 months. So a couple of things that we know for sure. 53% of adults say that purchasing food through takeout and delivery is essential to them picking where they're going to order. Um, if they don't have the options, if they can't find you online, whether that's through a third party or your own website or a portal that's embedded um, in a website that links to you, is something that they're looking for. And 50% of diners say that avail availability of online ordering would influence their choice of restaurant over another. It's just where we are today, and we want to make sure that everybody – has that option and you're being able to tap into that revenue stream. Uh, people today, they want it, they want it now, they want it exactly the way they want it. They don't want to have to go out. They don't want to have to travel. Um, they want to be able to get their food exactly the way they want it, very conveniently, very quickly, and very securely. Okay? So implementing online ordering, best practices. Here's some of the things that we want you to think about as you're heading down and into this process, okay? How will your guests order? Um, this, one's, this one's popular because there's a multitude of options for you out there. Are they gonna order from just a basic web page, a portal that's embedded into your already online footprint? Possibly. Um, a kiosk that stands out front, whether that is you're providing a tablet or a full terminal, uh, something for them to walk up to an order. Um, or are they using some type of mobile device to where they're either going directly to your app, a third party, um, or are they scanning some type of a QR code that's taking them to your menu and then letting, letting them continue? All of these are things to think about of where you want to meet your guests uh, because there's different verticals of customer that want different experiences. Um, how will you choose your online menu? This is huge. Um, people that are just getting into it, there are certain things that they need to think about. What items are we going to do? What travels well? Um, what is going to go from kitchen to either pick up and then getting to its final destination or delivery and still be a high quality that's going to make them want to do it again and again? How do orders get to the kitchen? That's the big one. Um, that's the one that people really ask a lot about. Um, a lot of the options that are out there, there's a step in between. The orders come in, whether it is the old style fax machine or they're coming in by email. Um, and then those have to be re-input. So you have to have employees that are keeping an eye out for that. And then you've also got the potential um, of order misentry, re-keying, and then um, issues down the road. So something to think about. How do orders get fulfilled? How is it going to be managed within your building? Um, you know, some of the things that people don't think about when they get into online ordering, especially now that we're starting to see different areas open up um, and different parts are going, restaurants are starting to fill back up. So Online ordering is another revenue stream, but it's also adding more stress on into the kitchen. Um, and we're going to touch base on this a little bit in just a couple of minutes. The other thing is how to guess pay. Um, everybody's a little bit different. Some people want the full digital experience. I want them to be able to look at my menu online. I want them to be able to order online. And I want them to be able to pay online. Other people, um, I want them to be able to order online, but I still want that touch point for now. And for some, some guests, some verticals, that's fine. If I can place my order online myself, come get it. Uh, that way we still have that touch point. We can talk to them. We can do that interaction, that amazing guest experience that we want to deliver. Um, that's very popular, and people want to do that as well. So thinking about what you want to offer um, and potential touch points that may be lost are things just to think about as you're going through. Okay. So online ordering starts with the menu, plain and simple. Um, what are you going to offer? What's going to travel well? Are you going to offer your full menu? Are you going to offer a limited menu? And are you going to offer things that are going to drive people online, so items that are only available online? These are things to think about um, depending on how much business you want to drive to that digital piece. The other part is, is your kitchen ready, especially if you're in an area that's opening up? A lot of groups have use online ordering to keep the doors open, and they've also found that they can make a significant amount of revenue with this, so they don't want to let go of it. So now if I'm opening, the restaurants are, you know, 50, 75, 100% capacity as well as online. It's something to think about is how is your kitchen going to handle that? Um, and that's everything from creating the food to boxing up the food, then to managing it from there, either delivery directly to the person, to a third party for them to pick up, um, and those different those different steps. We're seeing a lot of people really starting to modify their kitchens 
um, having a completely separate area for takeout, pickup, delivery for them to grab it and someone to manage it. So you're also potentially looking at a, a bit of a labor bump for what's going on there. And then choosing your online order platform. There's a lot of different options out there for you to look at. Um, again, if you've got a website, dropping your menu into a portal with a phone number for them to call is an easy first step. But we can also have um, online providers, DoorDash, uh, Chally, different groups like that that are going to let you reach more people because people tend to have a favorite. Um, what we're noticing a lot is people have a favorite, maybe a secondary that they'll go to. So we want to be able to hit them um, at those different platforms because we don't want to miss out on that particular revenue stream. Um, and then the ability to add uh, capability as needed, right? This is one of the interesting parts about um, the online ordering piece, and there's different bolt-ons, different things that we can add onto it. An example is we've got a customer that they're using one of our online order providers, and they've added a piece to it that's a kiosk. The kiosk can be outside, the kiosk can be inside, um, and this kiosk actually has facial recognition, which is really nice. So they can come up, and again, depends on where you fall on that side of facial recognition, but I can come in and place an order, and I can sign up, put all of my basic information in, place my order. When I come back, that facial recognition um, will actually, and it's a, the company is actually called Byte, and they are working and integrating with Olo and a couple of others. I just walk up to the kiosk, and it goes, oh, welcome back, Patrick. Last time you had the bacon, rank, bacon chicken ranch. Um, would you like to reorder that? And they have my previous order right there or the ability to upsell and say, hey, here's some other things you might like that are similar. So there's, you know, some great capabilities that can be added on, again, depending on how deep and how, how wide you want to go into the online ordering piece uh, with kiosks and different things. Okay. So one of the things that we want to focus on is starting with your menu. And we've talked about this just briefly, but what menu items travel, right? Not everything that's on your menu may travel well and do well over a period of time, whether it's with delivery or pickup, depending on how far they have to travel, um, if it's a delivery piece, how many orders are going to be in front of them, um, really thinking about what on your menu is going to give them the best customer experience um, to drive them back to you to order from more often. Um, can your existing staff handle it, right? This is one of the challenges that people run into because right now with the third party groups, uh, the Chowleys, the DoorDash, the Skip the Dishes, we don't have a throttling option. And most people don't because these guys have, they make their money by volume. So do will your exi existing staff be able to handle it, both front of the house and the back of the house? The amount of orders that are coming in along with your walk-in, along with your call-in, um, all things to think about as you're kind of wading into the online arena. Um, what do you want to offer? Um, are you going to build a special menu? Is the menu online going to be different than your menu in-house? We talked about a few minutes ago, a lot of people are putting online item only to get people to go for things that will drive them to the website. So we know this is really popular. We're not going to offer it in the restaurant right now. We're only going to offer it online or even a new menu. Hey, if you want to try these new items, they're online only right now. Um, so just something to think about to figure out how you want to go into that, how you want to drive traffic there. Um, POS definitely needs to be part and central um, to your online piece. If your POS integrates directly to the online steps, it will make things much easier because then you have a central focal point to actually make changes, edit prices, um, and even stop the selling of items if you need to. And that's where those integrations to the web providers as well as the third party delivery groups is really going to pay off and make your life much, much easier. Okay. So one of the things that we like to talk to people to just have them pay a little bit of attention to is the change that is going to come for your kitchen. Um, you know, the kitchen or most kitchens right now, if there's not a huge online presence or it's something you're just starting out, Typically, they get heads up from the front. The hostesses, the servers will let them know, hey, it's starting to fill up. We're starting to get busy. Hey, I've got some big tops coming in um, so that they get just kind of a heads up so they can be prepared. On the online section, you don't get that. Um, if it's integrated into your point of sale, those orders are just going to come directly through just like they were just being placed in the front. So whether it's a large order, um, a group that's placing an order, or just a large amount of orders, um, that's something that you need to be sure that the kitchen is ready for. 
And then do you need to move to a kitchen display system? This is becoming very popular because it's a little bit easier to manage um, than a printer. One of the things that we're seeing and that you can do with kitchen displays is I can actually go in and I can split the screens or I can have a screen that's just for delivery. Um, that's for the online pieces that sits separate from my in-house that runs through. So I can keep them separate. I can look at the timing on them um, and the kitchen can then focus on, do I need to shift people from here to here? Hey, you slide over and take care of online. We'll take care of what's coming in because it's a little slower or the rush is dropping down. Um, and that QSR kitchen video can really make a huge difference. One, because it gives you more data quickly. You have control over timing of the items. If there's multiple items on the order and some take longer to cook than others, we can time those in um, so that they will actually all hopefully be getting done about the same time hitting the window for delivery. So everybody's got the same quality level going out and it'll just give you a real grip and handle on that. And then you can also look at the metrics. If you're using a kitchen video system like QSR, um, you can go and look at how long those orders actually took versus the time you put in that you thought the item would take to do um, and really get to the granular level of the metrics and look at what's going on and how your kitchen is handling it. Okay. So the Squirrel POS and online ordering platform. So when you're ordering from the POS, um, if it is with one of the groups that we're integrated with, and there are multiple, we've got a couple of options here. We're showing Tacit, which is also referred to as Megan, Xdyne, and Olo, um, that are on here. When we're communicating to them, it's direct. When orders come in through them, it's direct. So it's coming in just like it was being put at the front um, at a terminal, and it's driving directly into the system, which then means everything else is going to flow like normal. There's no points of failure. There's no extra human interaction needed. Another area that needed, needs to be verified. Um, if you look right below the Squirrel terminal right there, um, Squirrel has built into our core 11.7 the ability to manage these online menus and what you want to put up. So in the menu entry setup section, we actually have a field now that will let us go in and select the menu item, say, yes, this is now available online, put in a description, load up a picture, and then at the next um, synchronization period, it will automatically push that data up or change it, change the price. Uh, change the name, change the picture, whatever that needs to be done. And it's all done from within your Squirrel software, which makes it a central management point as opposed to having to go to one, two, or three different ones. We're also showing down at the bottom Chally. And Chally integration is great because it allows us to be a one-to-many. So if you're going with Squirrel 11.7, which is going to give you your best um, option for online piece, but through Chally, then you can actually manage it through the Squirrel POS, but actually have multiple third parties that are actually doing your online ordering and delivery. So in one spot, I can manage it. I change it. It automatically uploads, and it goes to DoorDash, Skip the Dishes, um, and any number of them. We've actually got a group coming on here shortly that through our Chally integration, they're actually managing five different um, online ordering groups for their area because they are all pretty close in the amount of revenue that they're doing for the area. They're all popular and they don't want to miss out on any of those revenue streams. And that's in conjunction with uh, what they have coming in the door. Um, as they're opening up, I think they're at about 75% capacity, um, but they're expecting to get to 100 here shortly and they're hitting five online order platforms because those revenue streams are so important. Um, and then the nice part about it is once we go through those, it's going to automatically update the website, the kiosk, and the third-party deliveries. So that, again, a central point, whether you're managing that at the terminal or the back of the house, will actually flow directly to them and then hit the customer-facing pieces uh, wherever they actually are getting them. Okay? So the thing to remember and the thing that we stress with people as they're getting into this is because it's not a one-size-fits-all or that everybody has to do it, is to look at basically three stages. So a basic, an intermediate, and advanced. So the basic would be a simple menu online via website, probably doing pickup and takeout, and they're paying in the restaurant. A lot of groups, like I said earlier, they don't want to lose that touch point, at least not right now, um, or as they're first getting into it. So we can get into it, have a very basic interface, um, and then grow into it as I want to do more and more. When we get to the intermediate side of it, expanded menu, potentially with exclusive items that are only available online, uh, doing pickup and takeout, curbside pickup, pay inside, in-house, or online where they get a choice. 
um, as well as deferred ordering and advanced ordering for future dates, different things like that that you can actually manage but give a greater scope and hit a few more revenue um, revenue sections. Then there's the advanced side, full menu. Um, we're adding loyalty. We're adding gift cards. We're doing e-gift cards, kiosks, pickup, takeout, curbside, and delivery, um, and then your choice, pay inside, pay online. Do I want to use a gift card? Do I want to use loyalty points? Um, those pieces, and then um, guest notification if you want to get into that so they know when their orders are ready um, and that extra level of communication that's going to run um, between the provider and the customer. So you can really look at online ordering as kind of a crawl, walk, run. Some people just jump right into the deep end. They want to get it going. They want to maximize that revenue stream, um, or you can fall in the middle. Hey, we're going we're gonna to dabble here. We're going to do this and this. Um, X, Y, and Z. And that's, that's the nice part about it. You can really come to online ordering for what's best for you today. And that may change tomorrow or next week, next month or next year. Okay. So just a couple of examples of those three. Okay. The first one is we've got a customer and they are a large casino. Um, and they have been working with us for quite a while now with, with the area they're in with COVID. It's been open, close, open, close. Uh, but we put um, a online ordering piece in there um, and we did it in different stages. The first one was they wanted a central location, scan a QR code, um, get to their menu and place their order. But because they offer um, loyalty points, essentially their players club, stuff like that, where they can use that for payment. When we started it out, it was order online but pay locally. That way we can use your player's card, we can deduct your points, comp your meal based on whether it's electronic comps, different things like that. And that is kind of how they started. So the payment was done inside the casino at any location that they wanted to go to. Once they did pick up and they had their car, they could go and settle out. Of course, we had a terminal uh, with a person right there kind of managing it, but they wanted to give them the flexibility to – um, if they happen to be on the far side of the casino doing something, they just want to pay at that terminal, then they can go and pick it up. Absolutely. We can absolutely do that. Um, and they're growing into this. They're adding new things, and we're actually looking at integrating their Players Club online so that they can take all payments um, as they go. Okay? An intermediate example, um, a larger expanded menu, again, like we talked about, online-only items. Um, guests can pay online using a credit card. Now, depending on which online order you go with, not everybody offers this. Some people will offer you the ability to let them pay online or in-house. Other people, it's strictly payment online, right? That's where they're making a lot of their, their revenue, and they want to make sure that they're doing those payments electronically. Um, so if that's something that you're, you're looking for, that's something to pay attention to. So more in, a more intermediate example would be we've got a customer that they are letting them do either. They are typically and finding right now that with some of the promos and things that they're doing to get them to come in the door, um, they're getting more people paying in-house than online. But there are some people they want to pay online. They want that curbside feel. They want to limit the touches, and that's okay, too. That's a piece that we're working with them on um, to make sure that they can meet their customer base where they are and with the, with the experience that they're looking for. Okay? So then kind of a, a more of an example of kind of the advanced level, and we've got a couple of them here. Um, you know, this is just an example of one of our customers' website to where they can go very easily do for pickup or delivery. They're going to get a full-on experience. They're going to be able to order the full menu as well as some of the things that are only available online. Um, they're going to be able to go in and do their payments. They're going to be able to use their gift cards, um, the loyalty points, the different things. And this is just an example of one of the things that your, your website could look like, whether you're providing it yourself or you're going through uh, one of the online orderings that will help you actually build your web presence. Okay? And this is just another example um, of a advanced level piece, full menu. They're going to let you choose anything you want. We've got pictures. We've got descriptions. They're going to be able to go through and choose what they want, add it to their cart, verify what they're getting, the amounts that they're getting, and then pay however they want to. They could pay in the pro inside the restaurant. They can pay online. They can use gift card, loyalty points, 
all of those things, um, just with a more robust menu, with a much larger menu. And again, that just depends on uh, the experience that you're trying to give to your guests. And then the advanced side, right? Full menu, integrated loyalty, gift card, online payments, kind of that full boat. We want to be sure that we're tracking what they're buying. We want to track more how often our customers are coming to the website, we want the ability to communicate with them over specials and different pieces. Um, optional third-party delivery apps. Um, the group that we're talking about right here, they're doing up to five uh, within their area. They touch, they hit all the touch points edited or they have actually advanced their kitchens um, so that they can actually do this um, and deliver the amazing guest experience they're looking for. And then those optional kiosk integration. And kiosk really today falls into two pieces. A lot of people are actually talking about a virtual kiosk, which is your mobile device, uh, so your tablet or your cell phone. Um, and then a provided kiosk that can actually sit in that can be um, a full-blown kiosk environment with a built-in printer or a standalone terminal that, you know, walks you through a kiosk environment and walks you through actually placing the order and finishing it up um, and just giving you those different options. And then again, uh, the optional third-party delivery, being able to hit um, a single or multiple um, and very easily managing that through your POS and not having to hit three different websites to make an adjustment and I forgot to change the price or remove this one from this one, making it through um, your point of sale, through squirrel systems with the things that we have built uh, will make it much easier to manage that process if you're looking to use multiple third-party delivery apps, okay? And then, you know, this is an example of O'Charlie's. They're um, one of the ones from the advanced side that we're working with that they are doing absolutely everything that they can do. They're touching every point. You can order online and pick up in-house and pay. You can order online and pay online, and then you actually get a bit of a discount. Uh, gift card, e-card, loyalty, everything is all built into this, um, as well as looking online at where you are and suggesting different stores based on volume. Um, so again, you can choose the one you want, but it may tell you your quickest order is from this one over here. So they're just giving you a lot of options. They're really maximizing uh, their online footprint and the digital experience, um, again, to tap into those revenue streams that we don't want to miss out on because there are still a lot of people today that either want to maintain kind of a hands-off, or that is their preference. Um, and we want to make sure that we're not alienating those people and we're still bringing them in uh, to our concept so we can tap into those revenue streams, okay? So just the quick takeaways that we're going from here, okay? So the key takeaways, ordering online is more than just a website, even though it can be as simple as that, um, if that's what you're looking for. Um, the POS and the omni-channel integrations, provide that maximum flexibility. So if you are integrated to it through the POS, whether it's direct to one of the online order providers or you're going to multiple third-party deliveries through Chali, um, that's gonna give you the flexibility to catch people where they are, find those multiple revenue streams, but have a single point of management so that you can easily take care of it and it's not something that becomes a whole secondary job or I'm having to bring in other staff to manage it. Um, I can stick with my regular staff because it's easily managed with the POS like I'm doing for everybody um, in the restaurant right now. Then, of course, Squirrel 11 um, is what's going to give you your best overall experience because, again, we've built it in to the core piece of uh, Squirrel. Um, we've got 11.7. 11.8 is coming out now. It's got some more functionality and things into it. Um, of course, you can use older versions, but for your best experience and to really minimize that footprint and the work you're having to do, um, 11, 11, 7 is your best overall. And then you can grow your, your options over time. So if you want to start out with just simple ordering and then you want to move to payments um, and then you want to move to gift card and loyalty and then eventually to third-party delivery, you can actually take those steps as they work best for you. So again, not one size fits all. What's best for you today and even if you're jumping around. Want an online presence, now I want to go to third-party delivery and we'll get to gift card and loyalty later. Um, it makes it so that it can be what's best for you and your operation today to reach your customer base. Okay. Uh, so now we're coming to the question period, and I'm going to hand this back over to Cyrus. Cyrus. Okay. okay. 
Sorry, yeah. I'll, I'll actually take it from here. Um, yeah, Patrick, ahead. I just want to take the time to thank you for that detailed overview. Um, lots of great information on how our Squirrel customers can get the most out of online ordering. Um, it does look like we had a few questions that came in, so uh, I will let Cyrus go through those and uh, hand them over for some answers. Wonderful. Thank, thanks, Megan uh, and Patrick. We did, um, just as a reminder, if you have any questions, just feel free to enter them into the question um, portion of your webinar controls. Uh, but we do have a few questions here. Um, Patrick, uh, the first question here is, what would be the advantage of using an online website over just using a third-party delivery app or apps? Well, using the online website is going to give you a little bit more control. Um, you're typically managing it or you're managing it through your online provider. Uh, when you're going through the third-party apps and everything is delivery and payment, um, you're kind of forced down the path they want you to run. Uh, but if you're just going to go with an online order provider, depending on the provider, you get a little bit more flexibility of how deep you want to wade into that pool. Great. So we have another question here. It's related around payments. If I start an online ordering site, can it work with my existing payment processor? Yes, and some of that will depend on who you go with. Um, some of them do offer to let you uh, place, use their online and then whichever um, credit card provider you're using. Others are a little bit more restrictive. They've only got a few options, and some are, if you use us, then we do this. So it's, it's really important up front as you're talking to these guys, let them know what you're doing today um, and how they can work with your current um, operational footprint. Another question here. Uh, can you explain how the virtual kiosk works in a bit more detail? Uh, sure. Yeah, the virtual kiosk working with it on your phone um, or your tablet is typically where you're going to go to a property, whether it's a quick service. As we're seeing it more now in fine dining and casual dining, uh, certainly in arenas and stuff, where you're going up to essentially a location with a QR code, whether it's where you're sitting or a central location. You're scanning a QR code and you're getting access to the menu, placing your menu right there. Um, and then some locations where you're actually doing payment on your phone or you're doing payment locally, depending on the operation and how they're doing it. Um, some will, you'll scan a QR code and they'll bring the food right to you. Um, through that QR code, they know where you're ordering from, you're placing your order and where to deliver it. Um, others will do a QR code. The example might be um, a casino to where I'm scanning and then I go to a central location where they're actually kind of delivering those orders. They're calling out your number, your name, uh, so you can pick up what you're getting. Uh, so it really just depends. But essentially that virtual kiosk is kind of bring your own device, scan the QR code, place your order, and then follow the directions of whether it's payment or pickup or a combination of the two. Okay. And Patrick, uh, one question here around the integration with uh, Point of Sale. How do I make changes to online menu items from my uh, Squirrel Point of Sale? Well, you've got options depending on, you know, if it's Squirrel 11.7 um, and those items are flagged as those online orders, you just make the changes in the back end like you normally would. You can even change prices and different things at the terminal in real time and it will it will flow through. So. Essentially, with our gateway, um, the way we're setting it up, when you actually make the change, the system updates periodically, and it will push those changes to the online platforms um, so that that is uh, populated throughout, and those changes are automatic, and it's just done like a regular change. Um, if it's a price or a description, very easy to do in the back. Um, if you're adding an item, just like you would within Squirrel, you build the normal item, you go down the screen, you flag that it's an online item, put your description in, your price, uh, upload a picture, and then when it uh, does its next update, it will push that information and populate it online so that can be available um, at that update. So very simple within Squirrel. We've worked really hard within the 11.7, the 11 suite, especially 11.7, to give you easy access to manage that. You can just uncheck an item. If it's online and you want it gone, it'll take it off. Um, with a lot of them, if I inhibit an item at the point of sale, it will inhibit it online uh, once it does its next update. So the people can't order it and it tells you that it's currently not available. Then if you get a truck in or some prep done and you wanna add it, uninhibit it, it will uninhibit it online as well. So those tools are there to make it easy for you to 
manage the property and have the online experience kind of mirror that. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. And I think we have time for one more question. I see one here. Um, can mobile or can mobile ordering in a casino send a text message to a guest when their order is ready for pickup? Mobile ordering. Um, typically what we're seeing with that is if we want to let a guest know that their order is ready, we're doing that with QSR. Um, they've kind of released that piece and we've got some groups that are um, coming up with new options for guest alert. Some of the onlines will actually send them a text message that their order is actually ready uh, for pickup. But from the mobile tablet, uh, placing an order and texting directly to a customer through the regular point of sale, that's not something that we have an option as of today. Okay. Great. I think that's all the time we have for uh, questions. Uh, once again, if you have any more uh, questions following the webinar, feel free to, to reach out to your uh, scroll rep or customer success, and uh, we'll make sure to, to give you an answer. Otherwise, I'm going to pass it back to you, Megan. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Cyrus. Uh, thank you to our attendees for submitting those questions. And uh, again, thank you, Cyrus and Patrick, for uh, taking the time to go through those. So that is all the time that we have here today. But uh, just to quickly wrap things up, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be following up today with a short post-webinar survey. Uh, your feedback on today's presentation would be greatly appreciated. We will also be following up with an email to view the recording and slides in the next day or so. Uh, please stay tuned for an invitation to our next monthly webinar within the next few weeks. Uh, we will be conducting these on the first Thursday of every month. With that said, if you would like to see upcoming webinars as well as past recordings, uh, please visit our website at squirrelsystems.com, click on blog on the main menu, and then click on webinars. Okay, and uh, as Patrick mentioned earlier, if you're on Squirrel version 11 already, you will be able to access many of the capabilities and features that we went over today. However, uh, many of them are not compatible with older versions of Squirrel, such as Squirrel version 8 and 9. The good news is that if you're already on EasyCare, you can always get access to the latest version of Squirrel software. And to make it even easier to upgrade, we are offering a number of incentives, uh, such as waiving fees related to upgrading SQL drivers and installing new EMV payment drivers. Uh, we're also waiving all um, remote implementation fees for upgrading your version of Squirrel and the host that it runs on. We're offering free setup of new contactless payment devices. And we're also offering free setup of online ordering, uh, ordering using Xdyne through Eigen. And finally, for many of our customers, you can reuse much of your existing hardware if it isn't too old. But if you need to upgrade to the latest terminal workstations, we do offer hardware discounts of up to 35% for our current customers. If you're interested in upgrading today to take advantage of these features and capabilities, please reach out to your sales manager. If you're unsure of who that is or have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our customer success team at customer success at squirrelsystems.com. We will also post a link in the chat if you would like to make an appointment with a customer success representative today. Okay, so thanks again everyone for joining and participating in today's webinar and have a great rest of your day.